Reshaping Canada's laws on policing, we look at the debate around security and civil liberties. Do the laws need to be strengthened? I'm Afan Chaudhry. Welcome to Globe Now. So, the Prime Minister is talking about strengthening the country's policing and surveillance. But along with rewriting the laws, there is the question of civil liberties. To talk about the coming debate around national security and freedoms, we're joined by The Globe's chief political writer, Campbell Clark. Hi, Campbell. Hello. How far do you think Harper will push for more security measures? Well, uh, that's not clear, and that's kind of the political moment that's hanging in the balance here. Definitely, they're going to push for more. They say so. And uh, the question is how far that's going to go and what their, their idea of balance is. There was already a package of uh, measures that were being planned. They were telling us that legislation was going to come. In fact, it was supposed to come this week. But uh, those aren't things that directly address cases like this. And uh, the Justice Minister has been talking about more things, about preemptive measures and relooking at the terrorism laws. Let's talk a little bit about preemptive measures. Uh, you know, what could those look like? Well, we already have some. We have uh, uh, provisions for uh, preventive detention, in other words, to detain somebody who might be planning a terrorism act, but it's never been used. Mm -hmm. But there's also a peace bond, which is more or less like a bail condition you can set on somebody you think uh, may be dangerous. Uh, it might limit their access to certain areas or to firearms, but of course the issue is, uh, would they break those bail conditions? What those things do is they set up kind of a hair trigger. You know, if they break the bail conditions, then you can put them in jail. Mm -hmm. And that is something that the justice minister indicated he's looking at. Campbell, I guess the test of any security measures or new legislation will have to be, would it stop another Ottawa-type attack? Uh, yes, that is, I guess, the test that we're looking at right now. But we know that that's a difficult thing to do, at least... Mm -hmm. In terms of what we know about these attacks, both the one in Ottawa on Wednesday and the one in St. Jean on Monday, these were not apparently people organizing their attacks with others. And really, most of our terrorism laws and a lot of our uh, intelligence and prevention uh, goes towards dealing with organized groups. And other countries are facing that issue of how do you deal with the so-called lone actor. What kind of willingness is there among Canadians to give up those liberties for more security? That's a good question. There usually is uh, actually a, a fairly uh, strong will to be secure amongst the population. Mm. Uh, but, you know, there was a sense that those uh, that was subsiding a little. You know, people were pushing back. You know, after the Edward Snowden revelations, there were questions about intelligence. There have been questioning of that idea. But usually after a crisis like this, you see a renewed interest in security. Um, and that tends to uh, drive... Uh, you know, uh, new measures that might, um, you know, limit our freedoms. So that debate changes after an incident like this. How are Thomas Mulcair and Justin Trudeau likely to take a different approach? Yeah, that's interesting. We've seen that right from the outset, like from the addresses we saw on the night of the shootings. We saw, um, you know, ex they expressed solidarity and they expressed you know, concerned about security, but they also said, let's not go too fast, too far here. We have to make sure that this country doesn't change because uh, of a shooting incident. Um, both Mr. Mulcair and Mr. Trudeau said that. You recall that both of these leaders were against uh, the military mission in Iraq against Islamic State. Um, and they're both saying, now, let's not change our institutions quickly. Let's let's be calm. Let's be measured about this. Uh, so that was a different tone right away. Let's not take this quickly as a turning point and a sign to, you know, run into new measures. You, that's, I think, a harbinger of um, a debate where we will see uh, two sides. We will see, one, the government pushing for more security measures and the opposition resisting at least some of those measures. Thank you so much, Campbell. Thank you. Well, that's all for today's show. If you've got a moment, hop onto Twitter. How concerned are you about striking the right balance between national security and civil liberties? Tweet us at Globe Now. I'm Afan Jodhri. Thanks for watching.